My name is Peter Bruninger. I'm here with Rick Schultz. Rick, how are you? I'm great, Peter. Rick, you have a great system next door we're going to go listen to next. Uh, Rick of High Fidelity Cables, you've been hitting the ball out of the park at the shows over the past uh, two, three years. What are you showing here in this room? What are you demonstrating? Just a little uh, bird's eye view. Well, um, just a lot of fun uh, for people. Basically, what, you know, what we like to do, Peter, is help people understand what electricity is, how it's made, how it's created, um, get away from maybe some of those uh, wives' tales that we uh, learned maybe in grade four, and bring us up to speed on what's actually really happening. Um, and, and from that, maybe lead us into why magnets. You know, there's an old wives' tale, keep magnets away from an audio system. But if you did that, Peter, an audio system wouldn't work. In fact, even a regular electrical audio cable inside a system has to become an electromagnet to work. So magnets make perfect sense as a solution to be able to deliver a really good quality clean signal and of course we've got to explain that some way. So unless by chance you can do vector calculus and, and, and uh, do the math over there that you see on the board, um, this is a great way to get into the basics of the science and see how electrons uh, are, are created or how not created necessarily but are used in mm -hmm. order to be able to make an audio system work. So what a device uh, demonstration do we have here? This is an interesting device. Yeah, uh, so let me show you that little guy there. So basically all this guy does um, is, is build a, a static base charged and you can see the little brushes here on the, on the plastic. So you can get the same sort of thing. In fact, we luckily got the same sort of thing on our CD player next door. Um, the CD is spinning, but it doesn't ground anything, and so it builds a static charge, and you can hear it output through our speakers every once in a while. Now, if you want that on your CD player, you have to pay a little extra. Uh, of course, we're going to try to fix that, but um, it was uh, the same concept as, as this, where the dissipating a static charge. Now, Peter, these little guys right here, and I forget what they're called, um, are, are basically the old-style capacitor. Mm -hmm. and they hold a bit of a charge in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, They're not real efficient, but they hold enough of a charge while it builds up that you can actually have this dissipate. So it just changes from one electrical potential to another. Mm -hmm. Your arc basically goes across that. Mm -hmm. This little guy over here is called a, uh, a Van de Graaff. And uh, it's a lot the same sort of principle as a lot of these things are. And basically, the creation of electrons again through a belt that's creating a, a static arc. And when I put this little guy it. Now these little devices are all based on voltage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, where, where voltage, high voltage products came from, for the most part, was a guy by the name of Nikola Tesla. And uh, what most people don't understand is just how simplistic Edison and Tesla um, in their devices actually were. Um, we look at this because, you know, we don't know a lot about electricity and we think it's just so fascinating. In order to create electrical energy, we can see this little graph right here. When I take this um, device, which is just a magnet on a plastic stick, and I put it in here, it's a coil of wires, I can create um, yeah. microamps of current. Okay, and these little, this, this little uh, guy is actually showing us that we're creating electrical energy by putting a magnet through a coil of wire. Now if I drop up here, and I, and I put this thing through, I'm going to drop the pen through first, it's just a hollow copper rod, but if I drop the magnets through, you can see that it takes them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it takes them a while to go down. Now, what's actually happening here is the same thing that's happening here, I'm actually creating an electrical current. Okay, I'd be creating an electrical current in either DC positive or DC negative. So this would be what Thomas Edison created. So let's just say that that was DC negative. In order to create DC positive, what I have to do is turn my charge around magnetically. Okay? So I'm going to drop it the opposite way, and I'll have DC positive. So we have these little kits, although I'm out of them at the moment. Um, basically, it helps you to understand what these guys are talking about. This process is called induction, and it's the way that uh, power is delivered to your house today. Most people think that electrons come from the power company through into your house, through your audio system, and then out to ground, but it doesn't work that way. You know, the power company doesn't give you any electrons whatsoever. What they do instead is they give you this thing called induction. So they put a winding or coil, a, a, a magnetic system on one side that you can tap into. Okay, And when you tap into that energy, it's basically coming from a power plant that works like this. So if I tip this up and down, I'm actually creating alternating current. If I was to do that 60 times in one second, that would be my frequency. 
so that I can have 60 cycles by moving that magnet back and down 60 times per second. Okay, so it's just literally that would be the same thing. That would be uh, alternating current. So alternating current is pretty cool. Now without alternating current, um, we wouldn't have a lot of things and one of them would be the audio system itself. So I've got an electrical current coming through here. When it's coming, it's coming from a power company that's building it in some method just like this. So I've got a coil of wires and I've got a magnetic field here, a magnet, okay? And I turn the wheel, when I turn the wheel, the coil spins. Now, when I got a cartridge on my record, it's gonna be a moving magnet. See the needle move? I'm actually creating a, an electrical field, right? I'm creating the signal by pushing it up and down at whatever frequency. If I move the coil instead, which is hard for me to do with my left hand. I can do, never do anything with my, with my left for some reason. So if I do it that way, then I've got a moving coil. That's all that's the difference between a moving coil and a moving magnet. Very good. That's a great way to explain it, Rick. Yep. So basically, when we do this, the power company gives us in the same type of model. Just like your cartridge works, they build electricity for us by having water go over a dam, by having wind spin a turbine, or by having steam come up through a nuclear power plant and turn the turbine. And we have get this little guy right here spinning around and creating current. Now if I twist this fast enough and if it was dark enough, we'd actually see the little light bulb go on. So basically we've got this uh, concept where electricity is delivered through this process called induction. And so then if we were to take and, and look at this farther, when, when the power company brings that energy in, they bring it to like a winding like this. And then we have a winding on our side of the fence and our winding is smaller. And what that does is it steps down the voltage. So that magnetic field that's in here is picked up by the second one. Now to increase the efficiency of that, Peter, what they do is they put an iron core in the middle of this. And that iron core helps the magnetic field to instantly transfer and almost 100% efficiently transfer that. So that's basically how electricity gets in. Then when we get that information, we can start to look at, okay, how can we deliver electrons in the house? And that leads us to the cathode ray tube, which we've seen before in another video. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much my presentation right there. Well, I loved it. I, it was the first time I really got a real good a visual grasp of a moving coil versus moving magnet. There you go. Right Thank on. you, Rick. Well, we're going to go do some listening next. Can we do that? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Okay, here Thanks. we go. Thank you, Rick Schultz. Well, thank you for inviting us into the listening suite here, Rick. Uh, tell us about the system real quick. Uh, well, it's a little bit like we've seen in the past, although we've got uh, an esoteric front end now that we've put our technology in. Um, we've done a little bit of work on it as far as upgraded parts and uh, some better uh, clocks and things like that as well. Uh, just to you know, have the, the front end of the system match everything else that we're doing. Um, one of the other things that we're doing uh, is this big uh, fill up front is actually a power cable. It's called the Pro Elite Power Cable. Um, again, it's one of those products, Peter, it's not a consumer product. This is actually just for professional use only. Um, we'd encourage people that make a living in high-end audio um, or depend upon high-end audio to look at a product like this. It's extremely good at lowering distortion in a big way. Um, and, and one of, it is simply our flagship wow. uh, product. So it's awesome, man. Look at the size of it, viewers. Just awesome. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really it's it's my pride and joy. That thing is cool. God, it is cool. <laughs> wow. So uh, then we we've got the amplifier. Um, High fidelity cable is going to be the distributor for luminance audio amplifiers. We work together on that. Um, Steve Kaiser, who is the K from B and K, he's actually responsible for the circuits, and he's come up with some really fresh new stuff. Uh, this new one's got this a technology called current injection, and uh, based on what Steve tells me, is it, theoretically it's incapable for the the actual uh, FET devices to create distortion in the way that he's done it. They inject current into the actual signal path. So it's really unique too. Um, we've got our Pro Series, series cabling, uh, which actually used to look big uh, in comparison to Pro Elite. It looks small now throughout the rest of the system. Um, we've got one of our power conditioners in, Peter, um, and then our bath-like speaker. Now, we almost have this completed. Um, we've changed a number of things in the, on the actual uh, production speaker. It will have a different type of stand on it. It will have some really cool um, levers on the side so you can move the panels any way that you want it. Um, it, but basically, it's it, we, we finished off on, on, on this speaker. Sonically, it'll be very much the same. Cosmetically, it'll be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's basically it. Well, good. Well, let's do some listening, okay? All right. Okay, fire it up, please. Track one. sound here. This is a very enveloping loudspeaker viewers. The sound is wrapping around my head back here. The bass line is so tight and extended. Uh, there's just a clean a cleanliness to the sound. Uh, really, really outstanding setup. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, a lot of hard work um, seems to be paying off. Had a lot of fun at the show and uh, a lot of people coming in and, and giving us the, the cheer. So I uh, really appreciate you guys coming by. You're always welcome and uh, really appreciate your videos and all the work you do. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate the work you do too. You. Uh, you bring music into people's homes and you improve systems all over the globe. Thank you. Rick Schultz from High Fidelity Cables. <laughs> 